we are once again. I'm Zachary Fowler of Fowler's Makery and Mischief, and you're watching episode two of 87 Days, a reenactment of all I did out on a loan, but as if I did it here in Maine with the resources that I have here in Maine. And today we're gonna cover the first, my first, uh, first night out there on a loan, my first day, my landing, setup, what it looked like, um, what I had to do, and then uh, after that we're gonna get into uh, my clothes. Last time we talked about my gear that I had, my 10 items, this time, clothes. So that first day I was dropped off, not a lot went into my camp and everything that happened. Uh, I got there, I was like, wow, this place is dark and miserable. I hiked up and around to where I found that giant tree that became my shelter in the, the back wall of my shelter in the end. And I went back down and I found one spot that seemed marginally suitable and it was still in the floodplain of the lake there but I didn't have much of a choice. It was the only flat spot that wasn't like 45 degrees up into the hills. So I set my camp up and this is what I had with, this is what I used that first day. Now let's talk about my clothes. We were allowed two pairs of gloves. I chose a pair of leather ones like these and those were the best. I'll link, the, uh, link them below here. The leather and the way the gloves held up, I tried to use those as often as possible so I didn't ruin my mittens. I bought a brand new pair of these World War I or whatever they are, trigger finger mittens with brand new liners that go in them. And they were awesome. I had to sew them up at one point where they got one rip in them. But um, those and those leather gloves, those were great. Those got wet every time I went out. I like them still, because uh, it was more rainy there than it was snowy. And uh, so I always had to hang them up and dry them. Every time I used any part of my 10 items, like the string or the fish line for making something, I was always very aware that like that's the last time if I use that up and it can't be reused if I destroy that if something happens to that or if it's it's bound to a project for uh, a long-term effect like this that's a lot of paracord with five inner core parts I can't use for anything so I'm not gonna get crazy about telling you about the knot I'm horrible with names on stuff so the more I tell you names and stuff the more people are gonna be like oh that's not what it's called but that's a, a bowling back there tied to that tree to a clove hitch on here that runs to a trucker's hitch down here to cinch it up a little bit. I, that's pretty much almost all I use ever, you know, uh, some variation of those basic knots to, uh, to make everything I need to make happen, happen. Uh, and then next we were allowed two hats. So Jamie had made me this one the year before and then this one she made, and that's the one I wore on the show. We were allowed two pairs of long johns, so I went to a Kittery Trading Post here in Maine, and I had bought North Face uh, long johns. It was springtime when I was going to the stores to get in all this stuff, so it turned out that I was able to get these for like a quarter of the price on sale. Two pairs of North Face long johns worked awesome. It was warm, dry, they dry out right on you. I had allowed two pairs of underwear, so I got two pairs of these uh, easy wash ex officio. I'll, I'll, I'll put it right here or here. Uh, ex officio underwear. They're quick drying uh, underwear so that you could wash them. We were also allowed one picture. So I had this picture with me of my family out there and I'd look at them every day. My, I kept trying to psych out the others at the boot camp though and I showed them this picture of Abby and said, you know, if you want to tap out, you know, it's all right because, you know, I need a new peg, wood peg leg for my daughter. Uh, started the uh, trying to psych them out game a little soon. They just thought it was funny though. So the yellow bean fleece, also my second fleece was an yellow bean one uh, that I picked out because they said I wasn't allowed to bring a vest, but I managed to install the vest as the insulation in my jacket. So I was able to bring my vest. Dude, we had to paint over our labels here. So I painted over the labels and we were allowed one wool sweater. And uh, I, once again, L.L. Bean. This thing was awesome. I wore this the whole time I was out there, the whole last two months I was out there. 
Uh, it's such a nice wool. It feels so good. I got to get down there and get another one. And then my socks, we were allowed three pairs of socks. This is one of the pairs that was out with me. They're a lifetime warranty. They're called Darn Tough. They are the best socks in the world. They are so tough and so rugged. They have no holes in them. They have no wear. They look like they're brand new. Um, in the end, the day I left, they I only washed them once or twice when I was out there. I just changed them every single day. Um, and they they didn't smell. They, they looked good clean. They're, those are rugged socks. Lifetime warranty. The best socks you could ever get. Uh, my pants, I picked these up North Face, but they're a large pair of like hiking pants. They were most the most resilient ones. Most of the hiking pants you find, they, they just seem so thin and stuff. And I wanted Carhartts, but I don't want something cotton that's going to be wet. I needed something that was going to dry. And sure enough, I end up wearing these the majority of the time with my long johns underneath. And they zipped off into shorts. They got a hole in the crotch at one point, despite their triple stitching. The but I was able to stitch them back up. They would get wet, and pant legs would get wet. Go back to my shelter, and during the time that I was eating my lunch, my body warmth and the the, the structure of that material was so well made that they they had evaporated and dried out. The LB vest. I was told I was not allowed to take an LB vest, but we were allowed to take a jacket, and the jacket was allowed to have a liner. So I cut out the original liner from this jacket and I had a, an L.L. Bean vest from the year before and I cut the zippers out of that one and made it so that I could zip this vest into this jacket as if it were the liner. So I was when I showed up, this was all installed. I showed them what I had done and they said it was an acceptable, it was an acceptable hack. Once I got there, I unzipped it and I pretty much wore the vest just all on its own all the time, all by itself because here in Maine, it doesn't matter how snowy it is, as long as it's not wet snow, I, I like to wear just my vest and a fleece. I, I feel like it breathes better. I don't like to wear a jacket. Um, the jacket I picked out was a cheap piece of junk. All right, there it is. Uh, I think the ceiling's a little lower than it was out there, but it serves its purpose to show you. Uh, I'm gonna load my gear in there and show you Two unique things about the way I went to bed in it. Because it looked cool, it was running low on money, had zippers on the arms. It was so neat. I knew it wasn't going to be the best, but I needed something, and I figured if it got too wet out, then I would switch to my rain jacket anyways, and I'd be able to dry and alternate back and forth. Uh, my pants, I was allowed to winter pants, and so... Oops, I almost forgot. The green bamboo shirt from Bamboo Fibers. Great shirt wicked and dried out right on my person uh, totally recommend it i don't know what happened to it i stopped wearing it when i got home because it was the size of a poncho at that point the winter pants were l.l bean hunting pants that were on sale they're like a 400 dollars pair of hunting pants camo here and i added since suspenders aren't on the list i added permanent suspenders stitched onto the pants so that they you know, what are they gonna tell you? To cut them off of the pants? So, they were permanently part of the pants. And these were pretty great. Gators, we were allowed one set of gators. Never used them. They sat in the corner the whole time I was there. My rain gear, uh, my buddy Mikey got me this. This stuff was pretty cool, Carhartt rain gear. It ended up being the door to my shelter the entire time in my upper shelter once it was all set up. And so I never used it for anything but that. I'd hang the pants there and I'd hang the jacket there. I'll do the same when I build my shelter um, as this, this video series continues. And the hood actually became a rain catcher because I had this one little leak in my shelter in my big giant log that was part of the back of my shelter. And so I had to pin this up and it would fill with water until I had to go and empty it out every 48 hours. Um, my boots were bogs hiking boots lasted the entire time kept my feet dry and kept them from being too sweaty and just an all-around great boot i still wear them all the time like the boots they're starting to come unstitched a little bit but it's been a year now you know there's some unstitching spots and stuff but they're still good to go these were my second day secondary pair of boots that they said were you know we could bring and what a disappointment. I tell you, the Sorrells, 200 bucks, the ones I ordered originally, had a, a liner, and then the sidewall here was just, 
things. These are called expedition boots. And I had to reorder them two days before I went and they priority shipped them. And the these ones turned out to be the only ones they could send me. And they had a secondary inner liner that doesn't come out. So these got wet. Like they're like, they can get wet up to here and they don't leak. They got wet after the first time I went in and they were wet for the first 14 days. They weigh so stinking much. These are like ice fishing or snowmobiling boots. You don't want to go and try to trudge around with these. Much less up and over my hill, that 150 steps to my shelter. These, I almost broke my neck wearing those half the time because I kept stumbling around in them. Um, what else? So that's all my gear. So I tossed my sleeping bag inside on top of my second tarp. That first day, Pelican case went on the far side over here next to where I slept so I could open it up, put the cameras in there, or be able to get one out in the middle of the night um, if I needed it real quick, just animals or something. If you didn't film it, it didn't happen, and it wasn't going to be on TV, so I was always ready to go. And then the next thing I did was instantly start chuffing the thing full of firewood. So if it rained, before I even started a fire, I started collecting firewood and putting it in here on this side. And then also out there, we had two tarps. They issued us a tarp, a 10 by 10 tarp to cover the camera gear and a 10 by 10 tarp to use for our shelter. So that's all we had. And these were just like this, these blue, blue cheap, like job lots, Walmart, like the cheapest of cheap tarps you could possibly imagine, paper thin. You look at it sideways and it gets another little hole in it or tear in it. But uh, I made the best of it and it took good care of them and it ended up keeping me dry the entire time I was there. Um, I wanted to build shingles to go on my shelter. Maybe I'll do that here. Uh, cause, but we weren't allowed to cut anything down bigger than uh, 8 inches. I did have one thing to read out there. And this was the only thing. It was a medical guide. And it's about, what is it, 200 and 206 pages. And I read this thing. It took me the entire time to read it. Because my dyslexia, I was, I'm a slow reader. But... And it was a very dull read. Only half of it was interesting. Then it, it gets into that whole, like, if this disease or that disease, look for this and a weakness. And everything has weakness and looseness of the bowels. It was like, whew, that was, it was a slow read. And when you're collecting firewood, as my dad always says, the higher up, the drier up. Even on a rainy day, underneath a uh, hemlock like this, you can get some fairly dry sticks the higher up, the drier up. Oh yeah, and one more item. My belt. That's the notch it was in the day I left for Patagonia. This is the where it ended the day I left. Alright, that's enough firewood. If it rains during the night, I'll be able to get one going in the morning. Now I'm going to bring my gear in. So that firewood serves two purposes. Everything I do, I love to have it be purpose, 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 I call it. Now that my firewood is in here and it's protected, I did not manage to get a fire going at all that first day. So I'm not even gonna bother to show you what it looks like not to be able to start a fire because basically it's a lot of groaning and pissing and moaning. And uh, here's the fire starter. I did find it fell out of the bag last time, so I wasn't able to show it to you. Uh, but I basically, that first day, I, I dug a hole in this thing, just driving it. I tried to do it with, um, I used the, the file here on the multi-tool. So I was basically, you know, you just get it down there by the fire and you're, you know, and you throw in sparks out. This thing, with, with that file, the back edge of that file, and this. It doesn't take long to dig a huge hole in the side of your fire starter here, the ferro rod. So I didn't get a fire going. I decided to focus on going to bed and I brought my gear in and uh, I basically, that firewood served two purposes. By, by being firewood and protected from the rain and I could put my saw, my ax, and my backpack up on this new firewood and it protected my stuff should I wake up in a rainstorm from sitting in a puddle on the ground. So the last thing I did that night was get ready for bed. I took my fleece off and this was probably almost the last time I even wore this one out there because it became my pillow. I stuffed the entire jacket into the sleeve 
of the jacket and boom I had a nice comfy pillow so that I could put it here in my sleeping bag and uh, and go to bed so that's pretty much my first day nothing too eventful not getting a fire going was a little daunting thinking that you know I overestimated my own skills you know it's pretty dark here will I be able to pull it off tomorrow I did put one fishing line in the water on a just a maybe six foot line on a static pole out there into the water and um, with a worm that I got on the beach by turning over a rock and I decided to go to bed hungry and thirsty not to risk drinking the water without boiling it and I'd have to try again the next day so thanks for watching uh, subscribe check out uh, the website and I'll see you next time Fowler out You still here? Go check out the website. There's cool stuff on there.